concentration of adsorbed sites. Another simplification that we'll often make is, especially in Fogler, instead of writing the desorption rate constant, I can write the desorption rate constant is equal to the adsorption rate constant divided by the equilibrium constant for adsorption. All right, that's just K adsorption is equal to the rate constant for the forward reaction over the reverse reaction. That's the definition of an equilibrium constant. Yeah? Is it exactly the easier measure equilibrium constant? Yes, that's usually why. Um, and I think in just in the book in general, he often does this for a reversible reaction. He'll show, instead of showing the negative, the reverse rate constant, he'll just show 1 over the equilibrium constant. Because I think he likes to factor out k adsorption. Um, and we'll do it with the, with the prime so that we can factor it out cleanly as well. And k adsorb is often written as simply a big K and then the species that you're referring to. So for example, if you have CO adsorption, You would most often show that equilibrium constant as a large K CO. Yeah? Do you want to see it in that form like he does in the book? I don't care. Okay. As long as what you have down there is correct, I'm not going to lose points. You're not going to lose points for stock. Oh, one thing I'll mention, having done most of this second exam grading myself, there's blank papers attached. I'm going to put in big letters at the bottom of every problem, if you write here, you die. <laughs> write on the blank papers, not, on, not in the tiny amount of space that you're given beneath each problem. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put little lines there so you can't write. <laughs> I don't know why people want to do that. You have like eight pieces of paper. Nobody ran out of paper. And if you, if you do, we always have extras, right? Anyways. Um, what's that? Don't come take the test. That's just more work for me. <laughs> do, it, do it before Tuesday. You know? <laughs> for real. Did I mention the faculty evaluation? <laughs> Great guy. Really cares. <laughs> There's counseling services. Is that what I should have So you can write the net rate of adsorption then is equal to Ka times the pressure of A, the concentration of vacancies, minus the concentration of A star divided by <coughs> big Ka. So let's look at what would this be if we have, if we are at equilibrium. So what is this equal to at the conditions of equilibrium? R net is zero. Right. R net is equal to zero. So all of that is equal to zero. So what immediately drops out? Yeah, the rate constant. Not the equilibrium constant, but the rate constant. Because essentially we can say that the pressure times the concentration of vacant sites minus A star is equal to zero. Right? So we can rearrange that. Now, is this the final form that we want to leave things in? <coughs> maybe, maybe not. Solve for A star. Solve for A star. Maybe. <coughs> we 
You don't generally want the concentrations of adsorbed species or vacancies in something like an isotherm. I can't <coughs> measure those things, right? So instead, what we would write out is if we solve for A star as a start, and we divide it by star, and now let's use the site balance. to eliminate the fraction of vacant sites from the surface. Now the other thing that is useful <coughs> is to define a term where theta represents the coverage. So what is theta equal to for this problem? What is theta A? The fraction of A coverage is A star over L. And so there's a bit of algebra I don't really want to go into. We can go into some of it. But essentially what you end up with, I can't find it in my notes. I just don't want to put the wrong thing up there. Equations only valid at equilibrium, just like a lot of definitions, you know, that have to do with equilibrium conditions are. Um, otherwise, you would need a rate constant, right? So the lack of rate constants is kind of a hint that this only works at equilibrium. And of course, we use this definition for A over L within Langmuir Hinshelwood kinetics. This is part of why. I mean, we, you don't use it sort of explicitly, but it's buried into langmuir hinshelwood kinetics. And that's why what this might look like is a denominator term of a langmuir hinshelwood rate equation. Right? And that's, it is similar to that. Of course, the numerator is a little bit different. But once again, this one represents what? Vacancies. And this term represents A star. And so you can see where this coverage comes out of, right? If the equilibrium constant for A is very, very large, what's the coverage of A? One, right? This term dominates the denominator, you get one. If the equilibrium constant for A or the pressure of A is very, very small, what do you get for a coverage? Yeah. You get zero over one, and it goes to zero. <coughs> So that's the derivation of langmuir hinshelwood kinetics, but often you can just kind of jump straight to this stage if you, if you just need something like the equation of you know, coverage. That's what it's always going to be. Now what is it going to be when I have a more complex system? Let's imagine I have B and C and D, and I'll put in a real molecule, H2. And I'll let you know or remind you that H2 reacts in this manner when it adsorbs. And we're still going to do theta A, 
So how do I have to modify this equation without rederiving everything? Yeah. Do you like for any species that's gonna be important to these are gonna add plus some k times the bottom? Right. So let's say let's go ahead and just put in just for the sake of it. We'll do this one like this, just why not? So we're gonna say d star star. Okay. And then this guy is I thought they can only absorb the one site. No, I, I scratched that out. I had written it backwards. One site can hold one adorbate, but one adorbate can occupy more than one site. And then, yeah, these will just do sort of the plain thing. So we need to add terms. How many terms? Four. Let's see if I can do that in that amount of space. The first one's going to look like what? What's this next term going to look like? Hmm? This one. Not this one. Hmm? How do I deal with the fact that D now occupies two sites? Is this a single site or two sites? Single site, right here is a single site, here is a single site, here is a single site. This one's two sites. So how do I deal with that? Square it, multiply it by two. What was, what was your suggestion? It could be, depending on how you derived it, yeah. But normally you wouldn't put it in there like that. But don't we do that for regular reactions? I mean, what is, <laughs> all right, so let's start with that. What 